Hello everyone, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage, and we're back with another of our Five Minute Histories videos. And today we're gonna to talk about Eastern Female High School behind me. And just two days ago, we got a new president and a new vice president, who for the first time, of course, in the nation's history is a woman, Kamala Harris. And we thought we would pay tribute to Vice President Harris in our own Baltimore Heritage way, which is very much Baltimore-centered and very much history-centered, by talking about women's education, and in particular, Eastern Female High School. Vice President Harris has uh, an unbelievable education herself, uh, a graduate of Howard University and then University of California Hastings Law School. So Eastern Female High School, the building behind me dates to 1870, but the high school was created in 1844 by Baltimore City Council, along with its sister school, Western High School. Those two were some of the two, two earliest uh, girl schools, all girl high schools, public schools, in the country and if you're a western fan don't worry we're going to do a video on you soon but uh, today's eastern um, so uh, what eastern gets started in 1844 for a little perspective baltimore city had started public schools the first public schools in 1829 we started four primary schools two for boys and two for girls and then in 1839 i believe um, was baltimore city college uh, the first public high school in the city one of the oldest in the country um, it was all for boys. So five years later, we have Eastern and Western as uh, all girls schools. The rationale for having two schools was that young women at the time were too fragile. I think that was the words they used uh, to travel across the city and back. Um, so they started one school west of the Jones Falls, Western, and one east of the Jones Falls, Eastern. Um, the tragedy, of course, is that if you were Kamala Harris and you were born back then, if she were born back then, um, you would not have been able to go to any of the schools, any of the public schools, because Baltimore City didn't start uh, public schools for African-American Baltimoreans until 1867. And we didn't desegregate our schools and open all of them to everybody until after the Brown versus Board of Education decision in 1954. Um, but Eastern was started in 1844. Let me read a quote from the school board in founding it. They said, girls who may have manifested superior abilities and attained suitable acquirements in the primary schools should be able to go on with their schooling like boys did. Um, and if you were one of those lucky uh, young women uh, to get in here, you had, uh, uh, what was the words? Superior abilities. You'd have superior abilities. You had to take an entrance exam. Um, you had to be at least 12 years old. You had to have good moral character, whatever that meant for 12-year-old girls. Um, and you had to pay a dollar a quarter, uh, but you could apply for a waiver from the school system. And in 1870, if you were in this building when it opened, you would have lots of company. There were 600 students here, along with their teachers and other staff. But it was a state-of-the-art building. Um, it had a central heating system. It had a library, and it had an art gallery, all very much uh, uh, avant for the day. Um, the architect was a gentleman named, uh, uh, let me make sure I get his name right, Richard Snowden Andrews. And Andrews was a, uh, a Confederate officer uh, for the South in the, uh, the Civil War. He was injured, incidentally, and went over to Germany to try to convince the Germans to sell the South arms. Um, before he could really do anything, the South surrendered at Appomattox, um, and that cut that short. Um, in one of the twists of history that makes you smile, um, his daughter, so this is the daughter of a Confederate officer, marries the son of a gentleman um, named uh, Harris Fanis stock, uh, who many uh, credit as being the chief financier of the union cause for the Civil War, um, selling uh, war bonds, um, so many uh, that the union was able to buy all of the stuff it needed to defeat the South. So a little twist there. Uh, but back to Eastern High School, it was here until 1907 when it moved to Broadway and North Avenue, uh, the Samuel Gompers building, later became the Samuel Gompers uh, High School building. Um, and then it moved to 33rd Street in Lock Raven. And I will bet many of you watching this video uh, went to school there in that building, or at least know uh, sisters or cousins or mothers or friends who did. Um, it, Eastern occupied that space until 1985, when the school system shut Eastern down entirely, moved all the students to uh, Lake Clifton High School. Um, uh, many people believe the city did that, at least in part, uh, to create more parking for Memorial Stadium, which was across the street. And of course, only about 
about 10 years later itself was demolished. But back to this building here, um, after 1907, when Eastern moved out, it was a primary school, um, uh, grades, uh, uh, I think, kindergarten through eighth grade. Uh, and then it was apartments, uh, and then it was vacant. And then for a while, Sojourner Douglas College owned it. Several years ago, Sojourner Douglas College uh, folded. Um, it went through some financial crisis and folded. And the building has been vacant for many years. Um, if you're curious as what to what Baltimore Heritage does, in addition to these videos, um, one of our core missions is advocacy. And for over 10 years, 15 years now, we've been advocating to try to find a good new use for this building to get it restored. So a little thanks again to all those who have donated your contributions uh, go not only to making these videos, but to helping us save historic uh, buildings like Eastern Female High School behind me. All right, let me wrap up and, uh, and go back to female education. Uh, uh, Eastern, uh, uh, Eastern High School, Eastern as everybody calls it, um, has almost countless generations of women um, who could proudly claim it as their alma mater. Um, but let me uh, share, with a, share with you a statistic that I found is interesting. Um, since 2005 in the United States, the majority of people who are graduating with bachelor's degrees and master's degrees and PhDs are now women. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.